Hi, I'm Katie Todd and today's episode is called Uncanny Attraction. Something I've realised for myself a long time ago was if I went into a room and there were 200 people there, 200 eligible guys, I would zero in on the one who would be not good for me, not right for me and would replay all my patterns from the past and you know what? I'll be attracted to that type to the day I die, which will be when I'm at 95. I will just hone in on them. How is it that we will zone in on the one that we should not be with, that repeats all our sense of pain that we've had before? I thought I'd tell you a story about a client of mine who explained this and illustrates this beautifully. And this is first of a two-part series, so if you like this, go to part two. This lady came to me for anger management. She was in a relationship with a fiancé that was breaking down badly. And she came in and sat with me. She's a very intelligent woman, very articulate woman. And my God, was she angry. I mean, as she started ranting and raving to me about all that was wrong with her fiancé, it filled the room. It was so toxic, the bitterness, the venom. And I have to say that it reminded me a lot about myself because I have equally been an angry woman like that. And it's not attractive, which to her credit, she sees. So she's come along to find out about anger. She was talking to me about her partner. She's in her 30s and she has a young child and how the relationship was breaking down and she was so angry with him because he was so irresponsible. When she came home with her baby, he said, I'm off surfing. I'll be back soon. And he was gone for eight hours. This is the first day she's come home from the hospital. You think, whoa, that's not too good. He's always going off somewhere. He said to her from the beginning, I don't know that I'm ready to have a family yet. He's an adolescent. He might be in his 30s, but really, as I'm hearing her describe him to me, he's about 17. All she wants is to have a stable relationship and to have a good family and have an adult there that she can rely on. And she is absolutely enraged that he's not there. Worse still, there's a young girl of about 18 who's a next door neighbour and he's out on his motorbike spending a lot of time with her. So you can see how it's not hard for her to get really, really, really angry. Now whenever I hear couples coming along with someone telling me about a relationship, I want to know where does this come from? Why did she choose this person to have a family with? Potentially to live a life with? Where did this come from? because in my experience it comes from somewhere. So we went back to her childhood and we found out a little bit about where she comes from. Her parents had not had a very happy marriage. Her mother was a very lost soul. Her grand, this my client's grandmother, had been a person who was not interested in the child. They were a very wealthy family and she was off having her lunches and socialising and organising the next charity function or the next whatever she was doing. And she neglected the child. The father, who was a very, very successful businessman, this is my client's grandfather, he was very, very wealthy and he would appease the child by spending money on her. So my client's mother would find worth and find the substitute for love would be in shopping. She would go and buy things and being given money for her equated to being love. loved. That's what she, she felt love was because she wasn't getting the real thing. She did not get time with either parent. My client's mother married and he was a busy man and he had not come from such wealthy circumstances. There was not a lot in common. After a while, there was a big incident one day that defined the marriage. He found all these bills in the car. He, lent, he borrowed her car, found all these bills in the car for things that she had bought that she couldn't possibly pay. And apparently every now and then she'd been going to the fathers to subsidise her lifestyle, which was way outside of their means. Eventually, her addiction to shopping meant that the marriage failed. Now my client found that this was very painful and she was early teens, her parents separated. She spent some time with her dad and he was fairly remote and distant and working, some time with her mother, who was more like a child and she found that she had to mother her. She couldn't really rely on either of them. My client was finishing school and she'd been saving for a long time for a holiday. She'd been studying as well and she was off with friends for a holiday. A few days before the holiday, she went to her bank account and to her horror, it had been totally cleaned out. She knew straight away that it was her mother had cleaned out the bank account. 
So she had to cancel the holiday, she had no money. This had been saved for years. Her mother's addiction had meant that she'd gone in there to pay some bills with this money of her daughter. Her daughter went and saw her, enraged. How dare you do this? What a betrayal, what a violation. You can just feel it. And her mother had nothing to say. She had taken it. A few days later, her mother committed suicide. This is the end of their relationship.